Grandson, as the old saying goes, yes, uh, I know the Pacifica and Dipper is uh, kind of a ship that uh, has been quite popular in the fandom uh, for, yeah, kind of, kind of a, uh, since, you know, end of season one, at least, you know, as, as far as I'm aware, anyway, I think that that's something that uh, the fans have been sort of speculating about, and, oh uh, well, yeah, there's only a little hug uh, in this episode, but uh, it does sort of seem like uh, that is the direction they're going to take things, so... Yeah, that, that's kind of interesting, yeah, because, um, you know, there's been very little interactions between the two of them, and, uh, you know, Dipper sort of wants nothing to do with her, so, yeah, that's kind of an interesting kind of approach here. You know, I was, I was kind of sort of um, wondering if they were maybe going to try and find somebody else for Dipper when, obviously, the Dipper-Wendy thing came to an end, and, uh, you know, here she is, and she's obviously not too old for Dipper, so... Yeah, this could be kind of interesting. It looks like they're going to take a bit of a different approach. It's not going to be so much uh, one person is in love with the other, but, you know, the feeling's not mutual and they just sort of want to keep it a secret like it was with Wendy. Here it's more sort of they kind of do both like each other and they kind of know deep down that they like each other. They're just sort of in denial about it. I think that's probably the approach they're going to take. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, more of a, just a kind of a side note kind of thing. Let's uh, actually sort of talk about this episode. Uh, some real proper development of Pacifica. Uh, for like the first time, you know, she's been the focus for like about four episodes and this is the first time we've actually found out some stuff about her, you know, that's great. Uh, I think this might be the first episode, certainly as far as I can recall, where there is no Stan and no Seuss. So, you know, I, I'm pretty sure it's the first one without either of them. There may have been other episodes where there was no Stan or no Seuss, but I certainly, I think it's very unlikely there's been another episode where there's neither of them are in it. But shorter intro. I noticed actually, which is uh, kind of nice, and I noticed there's a different message at the end of it. Uh, somebody else has probably already figured out what that is, but uh, you know, if anybody knows what it is, it sounds a bit like Gravity Falls, actually. Uh, but you know, if anybody can just like confirm to me what that message is, you know, let me know. Uh, but I, I really like uh, Pacifica's parents. You know, they're very sort of obvious, sort of over the top kind of snobs and everything. But there's a British sitcom that was on in the mid '90s called Keeping Up Appearances. That basically the whole comedy was those kinds of lines. You know, good mixture of billionaires and millionaires. Or, you know, what, what are we cannibals or whatever it was? I don't remember. You know, you don't set a fork like that. You know, lines like that. That's <laughs> so great because it's absolutely so ridiculous and everything. Uh, and, th and then this kind of following that uh, this family has, it's kind of like the royal family in this country. You know, I, people literally do camp outside for royal events, you know, just to be there when it actually happens. You know, it, it's absolutely ridiculous how obsessed people in this country are with the royal family. And people, you know, in other countries as well, I imagine, they, they come to Britain just to, you know, experience things like, you know, the royal wedding from a few years ago. And it is utterly ridiculous and utterly stupid and everything. Uh, but yeah, um, Dipper's just flat out dismissal of Pacific, although Mabel's kind of more sort of open to it. I guess the writers sort of feel it wouldn't be very, very in Mabel's character to just dismiss Dipper, uh, dismiss Pacifica even. So I kind of like that. And I like uh, where Dipper's actually sort of setting himself up to, you know, be, be kind of look like the fool when he's saying, oh, you know, Pacifica, you know, I think she's the absolute worst. And I would say that to her face. And then she knocks on the door and... They kind of look like they're going to set it up for Dipper's going to see her right there. And he's like, oh, uh, hi, Pacifica. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. Uh, you know, he, he, he can't actually full follow through with uh, what he was saying he was going to do. But no, he just goes ahead and says, you're the worst. You know, I, I like that. It's sort of deceiving the audience, making it, making us think he's going to look the fool. But no, he just goes straight through and says it. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. The character just simply follows through with what they said they were going to do. Uh, we had a bit of a subplot here with, uh, you know, Candy Grenda. And uh, Mabel, you know, it's interesting. This is an episode that focuses on Pacifica Northwest, and yet Mabel is just a side character. You know, it, 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 there's absolutely no Mabel and Pacifica at all. I, I guess they sort of felt, you know, after the Gulf War, that was kind of the end of the rift between the two of them or something. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird, you know, that, that Mabel plays absolutely no role at all. Candy, I, I didn't realise this uh, until recently, is voiced by the same person who does Bemo from Adventure Time. You know, that makes her even more awesome, that, and I think that pretty much confirms that Bemo... It's quite obviously female, you know, if Bemo isn't, even has a gender, actually. You know, it's a computer, so probably not, actually. But anyway, I'm getting off topic now. Uh, I got kind of a Ghostbusters vibe from, uh, you know, the, the storyline of them trying to clear that the uh, house from the ghost. In fact, there's actually a Ghostbusters reference early on in the episode. It's Ghost Harassers, I think, is a program Dip is watching on TV. And then he has the PKE meter later on. So that was uh, kind of cool. A chocolate fountain, obviously, is something that exists in real life. Cheese fountain, I don't think I've ever seen that. And Candy switching between the two of them like that, that's pretty fucking disgusting, that. You know, not not just that she's, you know, 
filling up on one fountain and then immediately going over to the other. So it's, you know, contaminating the two of them. But also chocolate and cheese. Ugh, that's horrible. Uh, I was kind of bothered, actually, by the bit where, uh, you know, they're chasing after the ghost and Pacifica doesn't want them to uh, step on to her parents' carpet or something because they have muddy shoes. And I'm thinking to myself, just take your shoes off. You know, I mean, obviously they're setting up the idea that, uh, you know, Pacifica is afraid of her parents and she doesn't want to, to do anything that uh, they would disapprove of. But that's quite an obvious kind of solution to that. You know, you just take your shoes off. So I didn't quite understand that. Uh, but yeah, I, I love the design of the ghost as well. That's, that's really kind of cool. Again, very much a kind of Ghostbusters vibe to the way that uh, they defeat it and everything. Because parents, they can't thank them for enough. But uh, that's enough now. <laughs> it's, like, it's, kind of, it's kind of an obvious kind of line, but I, I still thought it was kind of funny. Yeah, and then, of course, we have the reveal of, uh, you know, what's really going on here. People actually died building that manor, and then they were just thrown out of it afterwards. That's kind of cool and everything. We get some actual sort of proper development of Pacifica here, because, you know, it, it's kind of revealed that, uh, you know, maybe she isn't actually as bad as uh, first sort of portrayed in, you know, her original appearance. Maybe it's just sort of a, her parents having kind of a bad influence on her. Um, so that was uh, kind of cool, and obviously, you know, if her and Dipper are going to become an item at some point, you know, you, you kind of want her to become a bit more of a sort of likeable kind of character. So that's kind of cool. And uh, I'm not sure if I've ever really sort of seen that, you know, the, the, the possible sort of bully or antagonist kind of character then later becoming a possible romance for the protagonist. I'm not sure I've seen a show that's done that before. That could be kind of interesting. So, yeah, this really does sort of intrigue me, this whole Dipper Pacifica thing, even though there has been a bit too much romance in this show, you know, for my liking. And obviously Dipper goes off and he's going to, you know, get rid of the ghost, even though he doesn't really like what the North Wests have done, basically, here. I'd like the fact that he's still going to get rid of the ghost because, you know, he's not stupid. He knows that this ghost is probably kind of dangerous and he should probably still get rid of it. You know, in a lot of shows, you know, the protagonist would probably sort of say, oh, I'm so mad at you now, I'm just going to release this ghost, you know, into the world anyway. You know, just as revenge or something, you know, do something kind of stupid. But Dipper, you know, he knows this ghost is... Still potentially kind of a danger, so he's still going to get rid of it. So I like that, and you know, obviously the ghost is released by way of a sort of accident or him, dip, him tricking Dipper, basically. So that was uh, really good, I thought. Uh, and then he turns all the people into wood. That was a uh, kind of interesting kind of approach to it. And uh, the spit take frozen in wood. <laughs> they're actually in the middle of spitting out some coffee as they're being frozen. That was kind of funny, I thought. And Dipper is frozen in the exact same pose that the shapeshifter in Into the Bunker said he would be the last um, expression or pose he ever had in his life or something. You know, it's the same pose. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same pose, but it's certainly very similar. I'd have to go back and rewatch that episode to be sure, but it certainly did look very similar to me. You know, the, the only sort of major thing I think about this episode that I didn't particularly like is when Pacifica sort of comes to our senses and think, okay, we need to open the gates and let these people enter, stop all this, all this nonsense uh, going on, all these kinds of sort of chaos that's happening here, everybody being turned into wood, it needs to stop. Uh, and her parents still don't want to, her to open the doors. Everyone's being turned to wood and, you know, the, there's chaos and he's going to destroy the entire manor and they still don't want her to open the doors, you know, like, really? You know, seriously, you're just going to survive in that bunker, you know, for the rest of your lives, basically, you know, to avoid being turned to wood. And I, I don't know if I'd be willing to accept that. That that seems a bit far-fetched to me, that they still wouldn't want her to open the doors, even with all that stuff going on. Uh, but obviously, I suppose they still, they have to um, be insisting that Pacifica not do that, because obviously there needs to be this revelation of Pacifica finally disobeying her parents, basically. Um and having her do something that they don't want her to do, you know, was a bit of a revelation in her character, you know. I thought it was a little bit forced in the fact that her parents didn't want her to do it, but, uh, you know, I, I still like that as a bit of a resolution to her character and a bit of a development to her, and, uh, you know, I am kind of interested where they go with this character now. And and obviously, uh, you know, that there are the signs that, you know, this is just a sort of starting point for her with her, you know, them making a mess of that carpet and Pacifica saying afterwards, you know, but seriously, I've got to get someone to clean this up. You know, and, and similar thing with the hug earlier on. She's like, um, I'll pay someone to, or I'll pay you to make sh sure you don't tell anyone that that happened. Uh, so, yeah, she's she's sort of on the path uh, to becoming a better person. But, you know, it, it's sort of baby steps kind of thing. You know, it's it's just going a little bit at a time. So I like, uh, you know, that they're reminding us that this doesn't sort of solve everything. This isn't like just a happy ending for her. You know, this is just the sort of first step. Uh, and the one other minor 
thing about this episode that I would say I didn't particularly like was um, the cliffhanger at the re at the end seemed a bit unnecessary to me. You know, I, I I don't really feel like I need a cliffhanger to draw me into the next episode. I'm I'm going to go and watch the next episode regardless. So I I don't really need any kind of foreshadowing or set up for what's going to happen next. Um, you know, it's a very good cliffhanger, and it, you know, it has me intrigued, and, and it's going to start, obviously, a lot of fan speculation about what might happen in the next episode, but I don't really feel like it was necessary. It didn't tie into anything that actually happened in the episode. Like, you think back to Into the Bunker, uh, Zeus finding that that was a laptop and that that could be the next clue, that actually kind of tied into the actual episode because he found that laptop during the events of the episode. What we see with Old Man McGucket and, uh, you know, him fixing the laptop and uh, everything else... It didn't tie into anything in the actual episode there. It was just sort of a thing on its own, this cliffhanger. So to me, it was unnecessary and it was a bit sort of forced and shoehorned in at the very end. It was just sort of tacked on. I didn't particularly like that, but overall, yeah, this was a good episode. I really want to see more of Pacifica now. I really want to see where they go with the soul dipper Pacifica thing. You know, even though there has been a bit too much romance in the show, this does look like it will be kind of interesting. So yeah, this was... Um, Really good, really made me laugh, a lot, lot of good lines in this one. And, uh, you know, it's just a huge relief to finally have Gravity Falls back after, you know, what is it, like a at least a two-month hiatus. So yeah, that's that, guys, and I will see you uh, next time when potentially we're going to see a, a bit more development of maybe Old Bamba Guckett and uh, that laptop.